弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛。阿弥陀佛。Treatise on response and retributions. Uh, today we will move on to section. No, move on. We'll continue section three: crimes and offenses, and part two: transgression easily committed by people with authority. So last uh, last fortnight we talk about punishment and injustice and. That's a long, nice discussion we have with、uh, Jenny, Alex, and I think Maggie. Maggie was there, and Auntie, Auntie Yanzi. So today we will continue.、Um, just a summary, basically saying that reward injustice and punish the innocent. So you know,、um, in the literal sense, means the system for justice must be、uh, you know fair, and punishment defeats the crime. But if we put this in the more everyday context, rather than a very narrow legal way of thinking,、uh, it can be the way you educate children, educate yourself, or the way you um, because they say people with high authority, people the way you manage your organization, the way you lead your team. So you know you need to reward the behavior that is constructive, that is correct in the sense of you know、um, the behaviors or the um. The、um, the 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 attitude that is、uh, conducive to the organization or to the to their life. If you are parents, you don't want to reward your children when they throwing temper and fit,、uh, throwing a, a fit just because you love them doesn't mean that you need to spoil them like that. So the line needs to be drawn. You need to teach them to respect the line, and what happens across the line, the consequences need to be thought. Obviously. Doesn't sound as severe as that. It can be as small as you know, if you keep yelling. I mean, if you keep throwing tantrum about、uh, not wanting to eat broccoli or anything, you won't have dinner tonight. That's it. They're just not getting any dinner. Don't give in. Don't cave in. So teach them to understand when is the time not to you know throw a fit. Something like that. You know. So this can be as small as family, and this can go as big as a whole nation, a country. You know,、um, what kind of、um, do, uh, uh, interaction between、um, uh, different countries, different nations, different leaders?、Um, uh, or, like, how do you treat、uh, your sub subordinates? How do you lead your subordinates?、Uh, what kind of standard do you set for them? So this is talking about the standards, right? Punish the innocent. So if,、um, in the literal sense, obviously, if you're innocent, you know, you're not guilty. Punishing them is a crime itself,、um, but if you put it in the daily context,、um, punish the innocent also means that、um, how to say you do not、um, take good care or take good、um, not listen to what people say before you jump to conclusion or not、uh, tr truly how to say、um, investigate thoroughly、um, on cases、uh, that are accusor accusatory or towards the people. So you know, even people who has done in history, even people who has done、uh, their best to investigate、um, the the how to say the accused, you know, the case of the accused, would make mistake as well because error in judgment is a human error,、uh, and human are not omnipotent. They always、um, have bias, and this is why、uh, punish the innocent is very、uh, serious, severe crime in its own. Um, it warrants like you know different perspective. We have a system, right? We need to have different eyes to look at one thing,、uh, different perspective. Even then, there will still be error. So that's why this is、um, the point of this sentence is to say that、um, uh, th that one is called、uh, negligence, but this one is like intentionally punishing them. Um, maybe because of political reason, maybe because of、um, self benefit. You want to benefit your own. Uh, syndicates or your own group. Maybe you push all the we call it the black sheep. 
you know, push it on that someone. So there might be a reason why people punish the innocent. They know they're innocent and they punish it. Obviously, this is really bad. And the whole point of Tai Shan Kai Yimpian is to tell us that this kind of crime is easily committed, especially people with high authority. They have so much interest groups or interest in many things. And sometimes when people crossed their interests, they might, you know, use their authority um, to cover up or to lay the blame to frame someone else. So this is a very bad thing. And obviously, karma will come and serve on those people who do that. So that's what we talked about last week. Um, this week, we're going to continue with the uh, sentence, with the um, phrases. So, Salen Shui Chai, killing to seize property. Of course, that's called um, murder. And using plots and schemes to seize another positions and public office. Qing Ren Chu Wei. So, killing to seize property can come in the form of, uh, you know, like, you can kill came from from the obvious one like actually killing people uh, I think we already mentioned that last week as well this one so yeah I'll, I'll, I'll run through this quickly um, you know there is a wealthy merchant pushing the being pushed down the water by the ferryman the ferryman got the money and um, you know scoot and get wealthy off this ill-gotten gain and um, not long after he will have a son who gives him a lot of headache and he spent a lot of money on you know raising this kid um but end up you know this kid's getting more and more um how to say rebellious against him and he has not had a good night's sleep for a single day all these years when he asks a oracle why this happened to me this oracle tells him ask yourself what you have done 20 years ago in that river and he was shocked, scared, all sort of emotion comes through his mind when away from home because he don't dare to go back. He realized his son is the merchant that he killed and he died afterwards. They didn't describe much. So, um, yeah. So basically, the moral of the story is just don't take things, take money that is not yours or, you know, no matter... Um, um, Things that you chang either, you know, things that you um, rob, or things that you use uh, machinations or schemes and plots to get, you will never keep it forever. It will always be returned back to its owner, or you will you will lose it the way you gain it. So it's very um, surreal and but yet very true, right? It's like like shadow follows your body. So the way you get it, the way you lose it. So and you will get you have to pay back even more karmic interest in it. <laughs> I'll use the financial term. Basically, you need to pay back even more with your life or after you die. So, second one is Qing Ren Xu Wei, plots and schemes to seize another position in public office. So, plots and schemes is, um, how to say, you try trying to frame someone, you try to, you know, put uh, set a trap for them or, you know, you try to... Um, Defamation, you know, defame that person, uh, whisper in the ears of their superiors, telling something that is not true about that person so that they got kicked out of the office and you can take his place or her place. So that's scheme, plots. Um, why? Why would people do that? Why would people want to go through that? Because greed, greed after their wealth, greed after their power, greed after the privilege and perks with the position. Great after that 20% 20 bo 20 bonus package, something like that, wealth. So um, this kind of act, obviously, if you can get it in karmic terms, you already have that kind of wealth in your life, written in your life. The problem is the way you get it will discount the wealth you get. So in the end of the day, you still lose out. All right, let's not talk about whether you will lose the wealth or not. Let's talk about the wealth that you got at your hand already is a discounted amount because of your you because of your methods because of the um, immoral ways of uh, obtaining it the ways that is against the the karmic karma against the rules of nature and you know um, and people who has no um, fate to get this kind of wealth power position stuff like that when they got it they lose it immediately either get caught by police 
either get called out for their plots and schemes or either even worse got lose their life or lose their position because they were exposed immediately so it's just a matter of you know like how much do you lose or how much more do you lose there's no gain in the end of the day so Master Shinko has a very famous word saying that people who truly take advantage of others people who once attempts to take advantage of others they lose out in the end people who was taken advantage of they win big in the end right people who was taken advantage of they were uh, how to say they actually are the one who have all the advantages in the very end uh, so so the thing that we go about this is when this thing happens around us or um, this kind of thing happened to people around us to us uh, we need to think of it in that way practice that kind of mindset uh, understanding and ob obviously if you can validate through you know your everyday life news or people around you that happens to them immediately you observe around and you will see you know how this phrase applies to this people all right maybe what happened to them as well they were being fired off i don't know so basically um you know uh cause and effect you rip or you soap um so that's the that's the very summarized version of it uh because i don't want to drag too much this is the new one i think where we didn't manage to finish to kill or abuse surrendering troops and prisoners of wars so what comes to your mind when you hear this what did they violate we have a convention in our modern world yeah anyone don't leave me alone out here hello Geneva right Geneva Convention so Geneva Convention is basically talking about not killing um, people who have already give up fighting you right the point of war is already a, a bad thing bad omen everything no matter how you see it war is bad you can say that it's for defending yourself yet yeah, to get to that point is already bad all right we've set aside that who instigate this who's to blame and all that we just look at the war it thinks itself it's basically butchery but the person who butcher and the person who get butchered is people mm. and 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 to 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 bring to to come to that point is already a terrible terrible stuff um and even for sages like Zhou Gong and all that um, some people might say oh yeah because they were being propped up by the Confucian scholars as a sage but no they are actually they are actually well learned and they were in that position right they have to lead the nation they're born into that countries lead to the nations and um, sometimes they have to use army to do to, to 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 either defend their nations or either to um, mostly defensively or mostly because the previous administration was way too cruel and it caused a lot of uh, people to get you know it caused a lot of grievance amongst the people and flock to this um, uh, if not sages at least the great leader um, to overthrow this so war happens because of that so we have what we call the righteous war you know the war that is based on the uh, very solid and very um, justifiable reasons and and um, obviously they are history in history there are many cases that are like that um, but they also cases where the war was just simply to satiate your desire for power more lands more name you know like the great warrior or something like that the titles so um, yeah either way whatever reason it is war is bad war is um, bad omen bad thing and um, if that happens right we, we see in our current world we thought there wouldn't be any large-scale wars um, we have Iraq wars we have all these you know wars that happened in the last dec two decades now we have Ukraine being and the Russian war so this thing will happen as long as we have killing karma all right well, now we all know karma so there's no me no need for me to beat around the bush so killing karma cause wars all right and 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 right now what we're talking about in this phrase is people surrendering they don't want to fight you anymore so we shouldn't kill them that sounds like a common sense but you have no idea in the 
height of emotions during the war, all the stress and all the grief of losing your comrades or for, you know, losing the people that you try to protect. You, that emotion will come out sometimes, you know, and causing, you know, this anger to be directed at these people because they are the icon of the opposition or icon of your um, enemy. They are the enemy until they surrender. So it takes a whole lot of discipline and a lot of, um, how to say, internal dialogue or internal uh, restraint not to do that. All right? We need to appreciate this phrase in the eyes of a soldier who was going through this. Not us. We are relaxing here. We can talk or high morals that we want. I want to say that we we must avoid this kind of mindset. We are in a, you know, our hands are clean or anything. No, no one hand is clean. All right. If the nation is in war, every member of the nation, whether they participate or not, in some sense, nominally, they are part of the whole the war effort. Whether they actually, you know, add more add more oil to this effort or and helping or not, that's different. But once you're already on the ship, you're part of it, right? We're benefiting from it, or we are instigating it, no matter what side you're on. So, so going back to here is that this is a consensus that you know uh, people who have actually let go of their resistance and actually surrendering, we must not um, harm them, and we must give them basic cares to let them you know survive live through this period and um, um, the act of killings is bad you know soldiers killing soldiers they all like us going to do their job but their job is killing each other uh, because to ob- achieve an objective so unlike our office work where we can just cock off um, you know, go off the work or maybe gossip about your colleague saying how bad this is or that small little things like that they have to deal with PTSD. They have to deal with traumas. They have to deal with uh, grief, losing their comrades and all that. So w- appreciating this real context that happens to real people, then we can start to understand this phrase does not come cheap. Um, to hold on to this word at the very trying times is a sage. Right? That's how sage was made. They do something that most people cannot take. All right. So there is a like I like this one, this story. In Ming Dynasty, there is a Yan Mao Yu Xianshen, Mr. Yan. He has said a word. He has said a quote like this, a phrase like this, not a quote, a phrase. A person with heavy compassionate heart, with a strong compassionate heart, cannot become a soldier. Can we become a general? However. Does it really mean that being a general, you always must, um, how to say, go to that extreme, you know, butchering all the enemies and all that? Does it always have to be like that? All right. The fact is, it's not always like that. All right. If a general or if a person in the army can achieve an effect of stability, can bring about a, a, a actual stability to the region by, you know, saving the people, from banditry, from lawlessness, from disorder, or uh, so that it, 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 everyone has a more, how to say, in Chinese word, uh, so uh, people can actually live like a human being, not just surviving. You know, they have a community, they, uh, they are stable, everyone has a set rules and understanding what is not, what is good, what is not. Or your presence, merely your presence deterred that kind of behavior. Uh, or deter that people that walks on the path of banditry or robbery to commit things as they like. Then the general has done a great job. The general is Guan Yin, the great Bodhisattva compassionate. The general can be like that. All right. Just because you join army doesn't mean you have to butcher people. <laughs> That's not the point. The point is to defend, to protect. I know it's all cliches. It's all they, they are. They are things that you know people violate there's always rotten apples but the core of this organization why it is there is that um, this is not a perfect world this is a world of a lot of people um, sometimes they're not 
uh, how to say on the side uh, so sometimes they're not following the laws sometimes they uh, how to say uh, given that kind of absence of power vacuum might grow into that sense of um, violence and intimidation so you need this kind of military to you know use as a last resort to quell down any sort of um, uh, lawlessness so yeah in this regard no one other than the uh, general who walks on the path of uh, righteousness not in this one actual righteousness all right there's a lot remember I'm, I'm trying to be nuanced i don't want to be uh one shot uh, how to say one face i don't like that i understand that there is people who used the title righteousness as a label as a machine as and all that but there are actually people who really want to do their job right it, it all comes down to integrity they want to do their job all right their job is to protect and serve doesn't matter who as long as they come into that domain they want to protect they want to serve all right they may be harsh or anything they really want to do that those kind of people is what i meant all right so these in this kind of scenario where in the absence of um, a stable society everything's messed up and everything general has this kind of merit and benefits all right so because in if we look at that way if you have to you know kill a few in order to save millions and billions of lives at least in the sense in kill a few in the sense of first clash happens conflict happens all right killing happens because of two sides and then after things stable down or anything you create an environment where everyone can thrive or at least live like a human being that means they don't have to fear uh, you know the next day whether they will uh, live through that day then this is a giving of fearlessness so what you did is essentially all right we acknowledge war is bad and then however this has to go on and if it's go on and um, the killing is happening and hopefully when it settles down you can bring out a sense of stability to the area all right so if a general can stick by this rule, not killing as uh, abuse, surrendering troops and prisoner of war, that extends to not harming um, civilians, not you know, try not to um, in Chinese word, do not um, disturb their lives. All right, um, your troops has to be very disciplined to do that in the stressful situation like that, and to do that you need to have that sense of um, how to say discipline, you know. Right, if they really break the rules, you know, in old World War Two times, you got court martial. Sometimes they don't go through lengthy process. Bring you to the war and shot it. So, different times, different measures. All right, uh, we can't just say plain black and white. But the principle is never, uh, because these people are in your power, in your charge. You know, you are in power over their lives, literally. So we should not, um, you know, abuse it. Or uh, allowing uh, anger, or allowing um, greed for a more KPI score to do that, because in history there's so many cases where you know generals or um, like um, in, in in every dynasty in China, at least in Chinese context, there is this these people who you know kill tens, tens of one, just a hundred k of people just to get. The reward all right of being uh how to say just to get a title from the emperor stuff like that so that is a this word is meant for them okay yeah so here they say that dang qian jiang yun yong if you become a soldier and become a people in charge of other people's lives as like a police officers it can be police officers it can be militias it can be soldiers um, there are three things you can you have to uh, prevent so these are three no's uh, as a military man first thing is yep 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 that's what i'm saying number one is avoid using hate using lives of innocent people or even the enemies just to add few more badges and medal of honor to your um to your collections all right that means greed 
you know, greed after rewards, recognition, and and the exchange of that, you sacrifice lives, all right? Uh, because in the war, no one's gonna scrutinize you. You're in power, in full power. So that has to that line cannot be crossed, all right? Second thing is, yi bao yi bao. Okay, yes. To avoid using more violence to stop violence, right? So an uh, excessive force. We could, yeah, I think law enforcement say excessive force. Sorry, it's not clear cut, but we still have a line there. We can't just say it because it's muddy. All right, we we should just you know be like that. No, there's still a line. Okay, if you ha- if you can use non violence means use non violence means. All right, we should always always direct the situation away from where you have to resort to you know a lot of a lot more killings to quell the rebellions. All right, always address the grievances. Listen, what do they want? All right, what do they care about? Most of the time is their lives, their families' lives, and their properties. Keep it simple. All right. And the last one is Okay, yes. And then the third one is collateral damage Be- between soldiers when they fight, right? And you can see in the Ukraine war right now, Ukraine Russian war, all these civilians live in the apartments. They got shelled, right? Kiev, they got shelled, right? Doesn't matter what side it is, this is to be avoided, right? Both sides has to try to find a place where they are minimized. I'm, I'm being idealistic, but it is aligned, all right? If we just say, oh, this is idealistic, it's not going to happen. So what? You want them to just tactical new the whole place? No, all right? Doesn't matter how, how unrealistic it might seem. No, it means no, all right? So this is the thing that cannot be tolerated, even though it happens, all right? It has to be chased down, has to be taken out and say this is not good. Even this book, the book of cause and effect, trying to achieve this. Yes, you may do it. You may be able to level the whole city. You may be able to burn them all down. But what happens after to you, for, for, to your family? You know, people who command these operations. Look at their family. Put the house in Chinese word. They will not die in peace. Right? Because this kind of action is killing or abuse surrounding troops, prisoners of, prisoners, prisoners of war, civilians. All right. So that's a line that cannot be crossed. If crossed, then need to accept the consequences. All right. All right. So, yeah, that's it. 士兵不会伤害，严格治军，士兵不会伤害。Yep, yep, 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 yep. Because it only not only protects the subject in your charge it also protects your own self your own troops you know if they can conduct a very disciplined um that there's a lot of drilling there's a lot of um i don't know i was not an army but i really am interested in this if they really are disciplined and they really are one heart obviously i'm being very idealistic here because how can you expect 100 1 million people under your command or uh 100,000 people under your command to have all, you know, discipline that. But that, that's where the skill is. You know, you need to, you need to have, you know, this one, the opposite of this one, all right? Show them how severe it is when they cross it, all right? Show them how serious, even their lives. There are times where UFA, all right, the sage, a military sage of China, he, I think he, um, his son was late. He was given a warning twice, I think. Twice or three times. The third time he was executed. He's by by himself not by himself, but he was executed as per the martial law. His own son. Your own command chief commander, alright, of the army, executed his own son. After warnings, of course. Because he has repeatedly um cross offended. The, 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 the rules and regulations in military terms it means that you know undisciplined that means rebels instead of army R-A-B-B-L-E-S so so you can imagine being his subordinates you understand that that line you cross you can accept that so this is how it works I think even in modern times you might not be able to execute them but you will 
either dismiss them or you know dishon- dishonorable discharge. That is very bad. It's like having blacklist in your credit history in our office terms. You can't borrow money. You can't do anything. Everywhere you go, you have dishonorable discharge in your face. In military community, is bad. It's a big no-no. So say something like that. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. So I'm giving I'm giving a real story on this, and I'll I'll shut up and allowing everyone to uh, share their opinions on this. Sorry for that. First is Han Chao Da Jiang Li Guang. All right. There's in Han Dynasty about one thousand, two thousand, almost two thousand years ago. There is a great general by the name of Li Guang. So surname is Li. So this general Li is a very strong、uh, man, and martial arts very good. Shoots very well. The the bow, not the gun, <laughs> and the um, the the Huns as you end. If you watch Disney, right,、um, the Huns. Let's get down to business to defeat the Huns. Basically, that's the context, right? If you guys um didn't read too much in Chinese history, that's the context in Disney. Um, so this Han Dynasty people was against the Huns, H U N S, um, um people. Uh, you have to understand, it's a bit like Roman Empire trying to fight against the Germanic tribes in the north, but way yeah, as close as I can get. So what happened is these Huns from the north, like Mongolia area,、um, they are really scared of this、uh, General Li because、um, he's very strong. He's a strong man. He's very skilled in martial arts, and he's a general. So he leads the army. So. Good, very smart reason to fear of if you are Huns. So、um, General Li was now called as the General、um, Fei Jiangjun. <laughs> What's the context on this? The general who flies, a general of flight. Sorry for my translation. Basically, he was given a good title, and、um, in Tang Dynasty, which is another four eight hundred years after Han Dynasty, there is a great、uh, poet.、Um, Wrote a word, say how great he is, you know,、uh, he, he praising him. So that means that he is a big thing in the world、uh, of military. However, however, despite his talent, despite his great skill,、um, his path in、uh, military、uh, career is terrible, very bad, very unlucky. Some might say, why? All right, first. To have this reputation, obviously he's、um, scoring many aces. Now I'm, I'm cross servicing. I'm referring to、uh, air force、uh, terms. Scoring many aces. That means you shot down many、uh, enemy planes. All right. Scoring many aces in his military career. Obviously he's an high high achiever.、Um, however, we have to think about how did he get to this high achieving. As a military man, how do you achieve high KPI score? Anyone got any idea? How did generally achieve such a high target? A lot of life was lost in order to get there. Right, It's, a lot of them are unnecessarily. So. We can't. We now we kind of understand why he's not getting any promotions or not going well in his career. All right. So how did that happen? Let's see. All right. So first, let's see the result. He has a high score, high killing score, <laughs>、uh, scoring a lot of aces. All right. In his military career, that means he kills a lot of enemy. And however, his、um, uh, military career is not going well because he can never. He just could not get that、um, feng hou. I don't know how to say in in English. It's a bit like a、um, doesn't get the position of marshal, you know, marshal of the United States, marshal of the、uh, army, something like that. Some something like a, a high position in military, right? He just can't get it. He looks like the, the right person, right? You were there. You were like, this person is gonna get that next year, and then next year comes, he's still not getting it. And then after that, he still never get it until he dies. Why? So the answer is already、uh, in his KPI. Why? So he also asked the question. All right. He asked Xiang Shi Wang Shuo. That means his、um, 
his um, chief of staff, okay, uh, that advises uh, the whole uh, operations, all right, like a like a brainstorm, right, brainstorm unit. So uh, me, Li Guang, when I was young, I joined the military, all right. Every time I fight against the Huns, or to defeat the Huns, sorry for the cheesiness. Um, I did not. Um, I never once refused to be the vanguard, to be the front line. All right. I'm always at first, uh, first in the line of the formation to rush into the enemy. All right. And I kill a lot of hunts, a lot of enemy. And hence, I have a lot of achievements in these regards. All right. When the hunt, the <laughs> English. <sighs> When the dynasty, the, when the empire, okay, when the imp imperial army uh, was chasing after the Huns, all right, I always participate, all right. However, all those younger generals that joined after me, they are, they have been granted the title of marshal, or sorry, granted some sort of duke, doom, or duke is too high, marquis, okay, they were granted marquis. It's like one of those noble titles by the emperor. I just can't get it. It's not fair. Right? Why? So his um, advisors told him, General, please calm down and think carefully. Throughout your whole life, have you ever done anything that you have been regretting of until today? Have you done anything that you've been regretting still regretting of generally answered i once killed 800 um foreigners 800 barbarians who i can say barbarians but yeah 800 barbarians right in the contact in their context 800 barbarians who has surrendered already right i once killed 800 barbarians who has already surrendered to me I also felt very um, guilty afterwards and regret that act. So his advisor say, well, sir, greatest omen could not have, have I mean, no greater, no, no, uh, how to say, no worst disaster could have ever happened to those people uh, who has committed this crime, killing those who are already surrendered. That means in your care. All right. So this is why you will never get Marquis. That's it. All right. So afterwards, this is not, that's not it, right? That's not it. So after that, what can he do? He already committed that. So this general continues his job by, you know, um, conquering or defending or I think, conquering the Huns, uh, the steppy Huns in the Mongolian area. But he lost himself. Uh, he he got lost. Uh, he got out of the formation. He got lost in the um, desert. There's a lot of desert in northeast, north China, northwest China, the Gobi Desert. So when he you know chased after the soldiers, he got lost in the desert because desert. There's no food. There's no water. He commits suicide to end his life. And that's not it. Not Marquis, not end of his life is not the end of it. You can't see past life, right? If we talk to the general public, you can't see the past life. That's fair. All right. Hence, you won't find it hard to believe it. What about his descendants? His descendant is there. So let's see what happened to his descendants. I really like the way they, they put this story. First, his grandson, Li Ling, also became a general after his grandfather. All right. And in one of the war campaign, he was being uh, he was being held hostage. Or basically, he got defeated in one of the campaign and become a POW uh, for the Huns. Uh, so instead of being you know like defiant, defending his country and defiant against the enemy who held him captive, he surrendered immediately. Um, you understand that back then this is a serious thing it's called treason right 
yes, you get caught, you know, you get held captive. That's fine. That means you at most is incompetent. All right. Uh, worst case, you only your head get lopped off. I, I say like it's casual, but I think so. That's all. That's the best scenario. All right. Best scenario is you might be demoted back to civilian. All right. And then the media media worst with scenario is only your head get lopped off. But the worst happened to them because he surrendered. That means nominally you say that oh yeah I'm giving up my home contingent to the army to the Huns to the enemy. So by surrendering to the enemy, because his own family, which is the descendants of this great general, Li uh, uh, Li Li Guang, his whole family back in the Han Dynasty, right, the cities, all of them got Cao Zhan. So everyone, every family member in their, that that branch of Li family was executed, summarily executed. So that is the worst scenario. The worst scenario is not you lost your life. The worst scenario is you whole family lost their life. It it was a thing until very recent. <laughs> so yeah, quite surreal when we think about that. Yes, it's a bad thing, but the point is the karma comes back. Right, it does not come back only on you. It comes back on the people you love the most. All right, your own family, your own children. So don't do that. I think that's uh, stronger, strongest evidence we can point out without having the ability to see your past life. So that's it for these sec- sections. The the next section, I think we can put more um, time into this. But um, so far, um, do you guys have anything to share? You know. What you think about, um, you can talk about, you know, why would people do that? Why would people commit this uh, first part, you know, this crime? And, um, or anything else you heard of uh, that reflects the last two sentences? This one as well. How was the, how was the day, guys? <laughs> Yeah. I don't think I have anything else to add. Yeah, because we're not military guys, and yeah, I think I'm stretching it a bit too far. But mm. okay, so we still have like, because I'm late for ten minutes. Um, let's go through the last part. All right. Bianzhongpaixian to purge and remove sages and abandon the wise teaching. Yeah, this one is more relevant. Uh, talkable on this one. So first one is Bian Zheng Pai Xian. Um, Bian Zheng Pai Xian. It can be sages. It can be uh, wise teachings. It also can be context in the context of um, not that le- not that high level. It can be good people or people who are um, good uh, who actually want to do their job, and you remove them because of political reasons, because of selfish reasons. Um, you know, it put in a yes man in his stead, something like that. All right, this is good, but how many sages can you remove in the current life? <laughs> you won't be able to recognize it anyway. All right. So to put it in more in our context, the actual term "zheng" he xian, we need to understand. All right, bian zheng pai xian, bian zheng. All right, to demote, defame the right, the what is the right, the righteous people, the people who are, um, who are you know serious about their maybe in the organization who who, who is honest, who is in uh, with integrity. All right, Paisian is to um, push out those who are uh, competent. All right, Xian, in the terms it can be used in terms of sages. Or um, competence, all right. Sages is in terms of moral competency is also in terms of their skills, all right. So, um, yes. So why do we? Uh, because because this one is talking about the organization, right? And although there are a lot of righteous people, and good people, right? But not all. If you use Buddha level, not all are sages. That that's putting way too high, all right. But the the moral of the message is you remove these good competent people, all right, out of the organization. So basically, it's like removing car frame out of your car. So what can you, how can your car function, 
or removing the pillars of your house, how can your house survive uh, any disasters or any wind? You know, Katrina, third degree is enough to blow away your house, something like that. So they are the one that supports the nation, supports the country, or in Buddhism, that supports the Buddhism, supports the Buddha teaching, propagation. So from this context, then we understand um, these people. Yes, people who are like the sages and the uh, righteous people, uh, people of um, great character, great integrity, um, they are always important to the nations. We always use these people, competent people, all right, honest people, to serve the organization, be it the country, the Sangha, you know, in the Buddhist community, in the organization company in the family well the family is too big in the um, 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 company all right in the business all right why because when you have so much competent people in your in your in your organization how can it not be prosper all right uh, however because of jealousy all right of because of jealousy towards these sages since they were well loved and respected um, jealousy happens and because of that you we attempt to remove them try, attempt to demote them or in the very least suppress or delay their promotion so that they can't be used for a better purpose they can't be you know they can't um, use uh, make use of their own capability for bigger uh, effect better effect that is a trespasser is a transgression. All right, 世间有伯乐才有千里嘛. That's right. Um, just because they don't agree with you, just because you know they they they're willing to stand up and say this is wrong, mate. Like why 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 they have reasons, and then you were like, I don't like you. I want to remove you. I'm I can sure I can be very sure this organization cannot survive. All right. If any, they will always at lost, not profit, or a nation they will easily be toppled. Or in the very least, it will be very unstable. So it will be a mess. So what you want is a, 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 um, a mindset of people who are, you know, worth their salt, worth their grain of salt, worth their pennies. They do not say yes to everything. All right. They might not agree. They might not voice out anything. All right. Because they know that you know maybe in this organization they might not um, get any um, good. Uh, how to say they might get pushed out or something. So they will keep quiet, but they wouldn't. They will not keep uh, bowing to you and say yes, yes, yes. So somehow this is how you kind of know, um, you know, these people from the mix. You know, like how they how they operate. Um, they say their heart uh, straightforwardly, um, trying to point out the errors, trying to fix the problem, trying to get things working. So these are the sages. Uh, not sages. These are the um, competent people. These are the people your organization needs. And this is talking to the people in charge, right? Or in the very least, you have the ability to recommend them to the better position so that they can serve to the better effect. Mm. Wasting these talents is a great crime. And your crime does not be forced on you know, harming this one person. Your crime be forced on harming. The, the crime is determined this part, this crime is determined, this karmic crime is determined by how many people we affected in total. If this person who served this organization that affects, say, 10,000 staffs and many customers, then by making this person out of the job instead of helping him or her to get into the better position where he or her can um, serve better towards the community, the com company, or the, the customers, then your karmic crime is on the tap of all these people. Right? That means that you have harmed all these people. In case of Master Ching Kong, in case of Sage, you can imagine how serious that is. Right? Defaming, right? pushing out, this all happens to him. This uh, Sage, this person who has talents in propagating Buddhism or any religion like they can if affect millions of people billions of people 
causing this person out of a platform to benefit these people. And their benefit is not just get a job, security, those are importance. Their benefit is beyond this, okay, they still can learn from master how to do this. They also will because of this master or because of this sage, because of these great people, they can be learned to be liberated from their sufferings forever. And you can imagine how heavy the crime is by pushing these people out of their organization. In our case, the Sangha. So hence, there's a saying that RPD is not a joke. It's, it's very fair, right? By pushing out people like this outside organization, right? You are all the depth, not just the life depth, it's not enough, the depth of wisdom, that in terms of the depth of liberation to all these people. So until all these people either got liberated and become Buddha, only then you can get out of the punishment that you that that this is the person who commit this in. How long does it take? Infinite. Hence Wujian Di Wujian. No stop. Right? So understand this, then we can understand what in the Buddha Sutra they always say, please mate, don't do that. Please like it, it doesn't harm the people, it doesn't harm Master Ching Kong directly. Um, in uh, Master Ching Kong case, it doesn't harm him directly when he got defamed. Yes, he got harmed by inconvenience, right? And a lot of hardships, but he also get better out of it. He will grow and get a better person because he learned to be patient and all that. But you actually harming the people who were affected by your speech, by your defamation, because of th this wrong false uh, information you spread. Okay, these people who might have came across Master Ching Kong's teaching or any of the good people, sages of all religions, teachings, because of these defamations, they lost their chance. They, they were misdirected. So we, we all can imagine how serious that is. Right? It might not happen to, you, to the person who do this now, but when it happens, it just happens so bad. And, 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 and that's why, that's the reason why, all right, I'm bringing it back to Buddhism because they mentioned sages. Um, there's a reason why Buddha and Bodhisattva does not appear just like that. Can you imagine one person who just blab out some nonsense, which is very, very much likely to happen? For people who have no idea about these you know, teachings and all that. Right? Buddha and Bodhisattva just appear in front of them and they just laugh at him. Oh, oh. that's it. All right committed a lot of karmic crimes so that's Buddha appear because he's compassionate Buddha don't appear because he's a compassionate right yeah they, if they appear as a Buddha and in an era where people just don't appreciate any of the honest teachings they just want to hear what they want to hear then won't Buddha indirectly causing all of them to commit the hell the 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 the, 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 the deep the, how to say the the severe karma, karmic uh, transgressions, by you know defaming the sage, they are. So the Buddha was like, no, I can't come in. I can't appear as Buddha. All right. Like I can't just uh, benefit that ten percent, and then causing ninety percent of people to fall into hell. So what can I do? Being indirect. All right. Appear as a monk. Appear as a beggar. That's fine because I'm not Buddha. You're not directly defaming me defaming the sage alright I'm just a beggar so if you don't don't look up at me it's fine I'm a beggar if you can listen I might give you uh, a word of advice a gesture that you get enlightened in a sense so this is this brings in you know, this, this is why they don't appear so much often if people are aware of this transgression and stop you know this action or create a culture or have a culture that is not okay to do that, right? It's not okay to belittle sages, or it's not okay to make fun of sages, or it's not okay um, to do to to push these good people out. Then, of course, your organization will be better. More good people, competent, honest people will come into your organization. How formidable that would be! Your nation will never be touched. If you're a country leader, your nation will never be touched by enemy. Even if they do. They got crushed very quickly because all the brains are in your country and all their smart people were drained by yours. 
this is how it works now as much as it was then so that's it I'm going to stop here a me to for 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 May the merits and virtues accrue in this session of work, adorn the Buddha's pure land, repay the four kinds of kindness above, and relieve the sufferings of those in the three paths below. May those who see and hear of this aspire by their body mind, together we vow to born together in the land of ultimate bliss. Namo Ami Tofo.